Hello, I'm Ralph. I'm Dr. Jen. And I'm Paul, and this is Awesome Astronomy on YouTube. If you like what we're doing in this series, please do hit the subscribe button and like the show. And in this video, I'm going to answer a question we get asked a lot. But no, there are many others that feel they should know the answer, but don't want to ask. And that is, why is the sky blue? And if you just want to sound knowledgeable at a social gathering, you can say, well, it's because the blue wavelengths of the sun's light are scattered preferentially by the atmosphere in a process known as Rayleigh scattering. But then walk away really quickly, because that'll make you sound smart, but people are going to ask follow-up questions. Or you might just sound like a bit of a dick. Think we're done here? Yeah? But if you're not in a hurry and want to understand it a bit better, then read on, listen on. Watch on. The easily understandable answer comes from two factors, the sun and the Earth's atmosphere. There's only one natural source of strong light in the sky, the sun. The moon and the planets are only reflecting the sun's light back to us, and along with the stars, which are far away suns, the light they cast is far too weak to affect the colour of the sky. So we only need to think about the sun as the light that affects the colour of the sky as we see it. And this light is white. Astronauts in space, they see the sun as a blinding source of white light. But the atmosphere it has to pass through affects the way we see it down here on Earth. Now to us down here, the sky looks transparent and perfectly stable, but there's actually a 100 kilometer column of air above our head that weighs around 15 pounds per square inch on each and every one of us. We don't notice it because this is the atmospheric pressure we've evolved in, and it's exerting this force in every direction what we call atmospheric pressure. But to think of it like that might make it easier to understand how dense that gas is and how it can shimmer like a mirage on the horizon, or a star twinkling overhead at night. And those gases are important here because gases absorb and re-emit light in all directions. And when they do so perfectly, we call that curious process scattering. You can think of it as photons pinging off gas atoms, like ping pong balls ricocheting off bowling balls. So going back to the sun, its white light is made up of every colour in the spectrum. Think of Isaac Newton and his prism in 1666. The light at the red end of the spectrum has a long wavelength, while the light at the bluer end of the spectrum has a shorter wavelength. By a process glossed over earlier, that you don't really need to understand to get the principle, Rayleigh scattering tells us that the bluer, shorter wavelengths will be scattered more by the nitrogen and oxygen molecules in the Earth's atmosphere. So we see more blue in the sky than the other colours that are less scattered. Now if you follow him and thinking that by that logic the sky should be violet or indigo because that would have a shorter wavelength than blue, you'd be right. But the sun doesn't emit as much violet or indigo light as blue and our eyes aren't as sensitive to violet or indigo as they are to blue. So that then begs the question, why aren't sunrises and sunsets blue? Well, remember that column of air above your head? There's 40 times more air for light to travel through when it's reaching your eyes from the horizon than when the sun's overhead. And by the time that light has reached our eyes, the blue light has been mostly removed by scattering, leaving mostly red and yellow light to see. And to come full circle, that's also why the sun looks yellow and not white. If much of the blue light's been removed by scattering, the light we see appears more towards the middle yellow part of the spectrum. But if we take a look at other planets, they have different gases in their atmospheres and that affects the colour their skies will appear. And long before we could send space probes to distant worlds, scientists could tell what colour the skies would be on those moons or planets by the composition of their atmospheres. And they could tell what their atmospheres were made of by a process called spectroscopy, which was invented way back in the early 1800s. And since we've sent space probes, with cameras to Venus, Mars and Saturn's moon Titan, which all have atmospheres, we've been able to see for ourselves that Venus's thick carbon dioxide sky is orange, Mars's thin carbon dioxide sky is red, it has blue sunsets, and Saturn's moon Titan, which is mostly nitrogen and methane, goes from orange to yellow to brown as the sun sets. All determined by the gases, the compositions of those gases, and their ratios in their atmospheres. If you like this video, 
or want to know the answers to more of life's big questions, please do help us out by hitting that subscribe button and liking the show. And check out the Awesome Astronomy podcast on the links below.